Hi, and welcome to this presentation on ANSYS Workbench Mechanical. We are going to look at linked thermal and stress analyses. We're going to send temperatures from a thermal analysis into a sequentially coupled stress analysis. Heat flow will be applied at the base of a model. Convective heat transfer will be applied to cooling fins. The resulting temperatures will be transferred into a structure. You'll find out the temperatures, the amount of thermal expansion, and the resulting stresses from an uneven temperature distribution. In this demonstration, you'll learn how to set up the linked thermal structural analysis. Here we start in the Workbench Mechanical Interface. We're going to start with a steady state thermal analysis and we're going to transfer the temperatures that result into a static structural analysis. So we drop it on the solution branch. You'll see that we'll use the same materials, same geometry, same model, same meshing and contacts, and we're going to bring temperatures over to the identical mesh. Let's go find our geometry. I right click on the upstream geometry cell, import and I want a model called Contact WS3. We can open the model branch now and start our model development and wait for Workbench Mechanical to come up. Here's Workbench Mechanical. We'll close the usage tips and we can see the geometry that came in. We have two bodies. They're intended to be in contact with each other. So we'll have to close up the contact pair right here. Let's start with the steady state thermal analysis. We're going to be putting in some heat and we're going to be having convection to the air outside. First though, let's go look at our connections. You'll notice there's nothing in here. This gap was too big for the automatic creation of contact pairs between touching faces to have been in effect, so we need to right-click and insert a manual contact region. Our contact can be the face on one side, and the target will be the face on the other side of that contact pair. To get the contact to close as a bonded contact, we need to scroll down and find pinball region drop down and put in a radius manually. Here, a radius setting of two millimeters should be big enough to close up that contact. We could even take that down to just one millimeter. And as you see, that's enough to span the zone and make those two faces act as if they are contacting each other in a bonded contact approach. Now let's look at a mesh. We can look at our raw simplified mesh, generate a mesh. That's a bit too crude. Let's go down to sizing and bring that resolution up and try another mesh. That's quite a fine mesh. But note, there are too many nodes for the student version. So let's back off a bit. Now we have roughly two elements through the thickness of these walls, and it should allow for enough temperature variation to start to get a reasonable model. Let's go here, and we're going to input some heat flow. We're going to specify that on this bottom face, we're going to apply 5 watts. Up above, we're going to have cooling due to convection on faces of these arms. Let's select a group of them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, seven, eight, 
nine faces on here. We're going to assume that they will be cooled by the surrounding air. So it's right click, insert, convection. And let's input a convection of 1.1 E minus 5 as our convection coefficient. That's with an ambient temperature of 22 degrees, so this should provide some cooling to the model. Our contact has had thermal conductance of the contact pair set program controlled. That's going to put in a very high thermal conductance, so there'll be virtually no temperature drop across that gap. It's going to act as if it was in perfect or near-perfect thermal contact. Let's insert a temperature distribution so we can review the result. Also, let's insert a directional heat flux. Now we'll solve the thermal model. To see the consequences, we'll click this temperature branch and you can see that it's hottest down here towards the bottom. This is degrees Celsius and a bit cooler up towards the tops of these cooling fins because of the convection. You might notice we have similar temperatures on the two sides of that gap because of the high quality thermal contact there. Now let's move on and see what stresses are induced by this temperature distribution which is going to cause thermal stress. Note that the material model in here for structural steel has a coefficient of thermal expansion. It's not temperature dependent, but it will mean that we get some thermal stress. We have an imported load. It's the imported body temperature. We can preview it if we right-click and import the load. We're importing it from the previous analysis. So these are the temperatures applied to the structural model, and they will cause thermal stresses. You note that when I click on here, if I go down and have a look at imported body temperatures, I'm choosing the time in the previous analysis at which I import that set of temperatures. The temperatures here, as you see, go from 189 to 210, which is the same thing, 189 to 210, that we see in the result of the thermal run. We need to do something to stop this model from flying away in space. If I go to Analysis Settings, I could turn weak springs on, and that might be enough to get it to solve. But rather than that, I'm going to go to Static Structural, right-click, and insert a Remote Displacement. I'll apply it to the face over here on the right. Click Apply. I want it to not move, so I put zeros in for movements in X and Y and Z, and rotations around X and Y and Z. And here at the bottom, I leave the behavior of that face deformable, so that it can thermally expand and not have thermal stresses due to restraint, right here where the face is colored yellow. We have a model now that's ready to be solved. I'll plan ahead and insert a deformation plot. We'll see the thermal growth. And I'll insert a Fumise's equivalent stress plot. Let's click Solution and solve the structural model and discover what thermal growth takes place and discover our thermal stresses. Here's our deformation. You'll notice it grows from a number close to zero down here where we had a remote displacement. And you can see that the whole model is growing away from this point. If I animate it, you can see that it seems to grow away from this point. The magnitude here is, of course, exaggerated, which you can see on the Results tab. The auto-scaling is blowing the distance up by a factor of 37, just to make it visible to the eye. We can go and look at our stress plot and see that the thermal stresses concentrate in certain regions of the model. Something to look at, if I zoom in here, 
You can see continuity of deformation across that contact pair and continuity of stress across that contact pair. The bonded contact is acting the way that we hoped it would. If I go to steady state thermal analysis and have a total heat flux plot, I can ask for it to be shown to me with vectors, in which case arrows are showing me the directions in which heat is traveling. That gives me an idea how the heat is flowing. You can even see the heat flow going across that gap. This concludes the demonstration of a thermal analysis moving temperatures into a structure and letting us have a look at the resulting deformation and the thermal stresses. Thanks for joining me.